All right, and I am back. So what I've done right here, I've went ahead and connected my uh, Cintiq to my display. So you can see right here, I have my Cintiq on the right-hand side and my, just, um, my MacBook Pro over here on the left. Uh, here is my stylus. And my initial impression so far is that this is an awesome device. It's worked so far so good. Uh, some of the things that I've noticed on this is that the resolution on this, uh, you could change it, to, but it goes all the way up to uh, 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up. You guys will be able to follow along. Uh, let me go to System Preferences here so I can show you the resolutions. So you can see right here, I'm going to uncheck this for scaled. You can see how it gives you these different options where you're able to select. Now one of the things that I've noticed on this guy is that as I'm working with it, um, is that there doesn't seem to be much of a gap between where you put your stylus and where you're actually touching the screen. Um, it works really good. So here we go, you can see, you can set it up at 1080p. Uh, when set at 1080p, I've noticed, even though that this is not uh, a retina display, uh, since the resolution is scrunched down into the small screen, it actually looks really good. It's like, for some, it might be really small and tiny. You know, I don't mind it. I think it looks great. Uh, so that's not a problem at all for me. And also, as you're noticing, I'm recording this on my camera. Uh, this is my, uh, my actual digital camera. It's a Panasonic uh, Alex 5. I love it. Uh, but the viewing angle, it actually has a really good viewing angle. I've used some other uh, tablets that had really poor viewing angles. You had to be like directly over it. But from this one, I'm able to look from the sides and the color doesn't shift. Uh, it, it's not it's not bad. I mean, it's, uh, it's decent. It's all right. It doesn't completely change. Uh, so that works really great. Um, as far as, uh, if you used a Wacom Cintiq, you're already used to um, going into the options. Um, so none of this has changed. Uh, you do have the calibration if you wish to calibrate it. I'll go ahead and do this right now. It presents you with the four different targets. So based on your viewing angle, so it is going to be different for everyone. You're able to change it. And here's the last one. Great. If you like this, you'll select OK. So this works really good. Let me go ahead and switch applications. Um, over here on the buttons by default, if you press the center button right here. Now, what's different is this one is that this is basically a fork controller. It doesn't, it doesn't swivel or anything. It doesn't move, it's not touch-based. Also, uh, one of the things that I've noticed, I was working late at night, that it does have a tactile, or like a, a little bump right here. So you can actually kind of feel the difference for each one of them. It would have been nice if there was maybe like a very subtle LCD little light so I could see where they're at. Um, but you know, with time I'll be able to figure them out. Uh, by default, if you press the center button, it allows you to switch applications. So you can see right here, I have some applications already open. Now you are able to change these. I believe if I press the towards the left, it has a display toggle, which you're able to change. So now you're able to, as you move over here, your mouse cursor moves onto the other side. This is really big. It's it's such an easy feature, but other tablet makers either can't figure it out or they don't implement it. You just press it again. It gives you the little display prompts right here. There, it does have the radio dial. For some reason, it's over here because my mouse is still over there. Nope. Um, but you're able to change that as well. Okay, display toggle. Let me go ahead and close this. Uh, and you could customize all of this as well. It comes in handy for some of you, uh, some people who use it. All right, uh, response. Let me go ahead and open up Photoshop. I'm just going to create a new document. 8 by 10, 300 will be sufficient for right now. Of course, it's just <laughs> moving my document onto the other screen, which is not a problem. All right, here we go. So response, this guy has responded like a champ. So I am very happy with it. I'm just here in the dry media brushes, which is uh, within your library. Uh, I like using these dry media brushes uh, just as a default if you don't have custom brushes, of which there are many great brushes. 
um, that you can find online. So I'm, I just like using this uh, number three, which is uh, here, mess with a pop-up, graphite pencil. And you can see I'm zoomed in with my camera. Let's see, is it focusing? There you go, that looks good. I like using this brush right here. And it just works really great. Let me increase the brush size. It works. I am so happy with this device. The response is awesome. So you can see as I'm drawing. And here, let me just get really close so you guys could see. Let's see, let it focus. And you can see how close it is to the screen. One of the things that I've had problems with previous, let's see, it's uh, out of focus, that I've had with previous devices was that um, jitter. And let's see, I'm just undoing right here. This one, I have not experienced any jitter whatsoever. Uh, granted, you're going to be drawing in the middle of the screen, but as you draw a line, Uh, as you draw a line, you know, it has a really good response. I'm just going to get rid of the interface here so we could maximize it. And of course, towards the edges, it, it's, it's not even that bad. This right here it just happens because, let me show you, as you go down, it's still reading that the mouse is coming across. So, I mean, that's as bad as it gets. I've used other devices that it was like wobble city. <laughs> this one does not experience any of that. I get these nice, great diagonal lines. And it just works really great. Now let me go ahead and use a different brush that has better uh, pressure sensitivity. Let me just go back to here. We'll just use this brush right here. Yeah, let me create a new layer. So this tablet, this Cintiq, um, so far so good. Uh, a couple things that I want to point out. Uh, this is a new stylus. So this is the one that comes with my, oh, that came with the Cintiq. It looks similar. This is my Intros 4 stylus, but I've noticed this. I try putting it, and it's like, oh great, I can only carry one. Once you go right here, you get this message. Mm -mm. This pen is not compatible with the Cintiq 13 HD. It's like, aww, that would have been nice. But maybe there's newer technology in it. Uh, who knows? Um, I mean, if that's the case, if you use the mouse, you get nothing. It doesn't work either. So, okay, now, now I get the message. Not compatible. Sorry, um, you know, but again, it's uh, it's expected. It's all right. If it didn't come with the stylus, I would have been concerned, but it does. It comes with this really nice stylus. It feels just like the other ones. So these are my initial impressions. If you have any other questions, you know, let me know. Put them in the comments section. Um, I'm going to give this some um, more time, but right now, uh, I'm really happy with this. I've been waiting for this device to come out. 
And I did have for a while the Cintiq, uh, the previous one, the 12WX. Um, I wanted to keep it, uh, but I, I, you know, I looked around and heard some rumors that their uh, Wacom might be announcing another one. I was able to return it. Um, and I'm glad I'm dead. I am very glad I'm dead because this uh, this unit is really awesome. It's amazing. It's great if you're going to be uh, right now. If I want to take it with me, if it's in my bag, uh, it does add weight. Granted, because it's another device, but it does have that portability. If I want to take it with me um, for working at home, you know, it's a great little device right here. Um, it's uh, at work, I do have a Cintiq 24 HD, which is amazing, but it's also really big. Um, it's like, but then again, this guy, it does cost $1,000. Now, if $1,000 is too much for you, save up, because <laughs> it's a great device. Uh, there are some other options out there. What I would suggest that you check them out as well. Uh, but for, for me, I'm really enjoying the Cintiq, but you know, I want to give you guys, uh, I want to spend some more time with it before I give, uh, you know, a proper review. But so far, this device uh, seems really good. Um, there's going to be other things that I want to pick up to see that I can't notice right now. As I mentioned earlier, you can see here's the device, uh, the connector, which, you know, if I put any extra weight on this, it could probably break, which I don't want to do. So that's a consideration. If you're, if you're drawing towards the edge, if it's on the table, you know, you, you do have some room right here. Over here off to the side, there's enough room for you to actually rest your, your hand on. So that's not much of a concern. Uh, another thing is that uh, it, it's sturdy. It's good. Even though it has uh, this stand right here, it's nice and sturdy. All right. Uh, that's it for right now. If you have any questions, as I said, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. Thank you for watching this first impression. Hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>